Well, good evening as we are gathered around again with our families to lift our hearts up to the Lord for both ourselves, our family, our church, its membership. Um, what an encouraging time for us to be doing this. It's even more encouraging to me that, uh, Lord willing, in uh, probably another week or so, uh, we'll be returning to our normal service times here at Faith Memorial Baptist Church. And uh, really looking forward to that and uh, having our prayer times together as a church body and to be able to lift those up before the Lord. I wanna encourage again, just kind of in preparation, to uh, remember the morning message, to encourage our children to be praying and to be praying publicly, and also to encourage them even in our corporate prayer times to uh, join in with uh, our corporate praying uh, there before the Lord. And uh, looking forward to those um, very, very precious and privileged times uh, before the Lord to lift our hearts up to Him. For a few moments tonight, let's take our Bibles and turn back to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah has really grown to be a, a really a precious Old Testament book to myself. I think I would agree with the apostles and the New Testament writers that uh, really Isaiah and the book of Psalms uh, really are the underpinning and support of uh, New Testament theology, New Testament revelation that has been given. And uh, as I've been going through Isaiah this year, uh, several things have just leaped out to me. And I wanna give you one of those uh, again uh, this evening. So Isaiah chapter 50, and I wanna begin reading in verse four, <clears throat> and we're gonna only read verses four and five. And I want to talk just a few moments tonight to challenge us on this subject. The servant, that is the servant of the Lord, the servant as the disciple. And so Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 40. The Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. As I mentioned, this Psalm here, this preaching by Isaiah is what is commonly known as a package of four different servant songs in the prophet Isaiah. And this one here is actually the third of those Psalms. The first one is given in uh, chapter 42 in the first 12 verses. The second uh, servant song is given in Isaiah 49, the first 13 verses. And then we have the third one here, which extends from chapter 50 and verse four all the way down through uh, the end of the chapter. And then the four servant song is given in Isaiah chapter 52. It begins in the latter part of that chapter, verse 13, and it extends all the way through chapter 53, all the way into chapter 54 and verse three. And the amazing thing about these, these are all talking about the servant of the Lord, that is Christ himself, Christ Jesus our Lord. But it's talking about the servant, and in every one of these servant songs, it all ends with praise for the servant and praise to God for that servant. And so what we're looking at here in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse four and five is a portion of that. And in this portion, the, this song exhorts people who fear the Lord. I want you to look over here in verse 10 of Isaiah chapter 50, where Isaiah concludes this by saying, who is among you 
that fears the Lord. Okay, now that would include every disciple. It would include myself. It would include you as a believer. It would include those who have come before us that were genuine disciples. It includes those who are after us that are genuine disciples. We are those who not only fear the Lord, we walk in the fear of the Lord. But again, look at verse 10. Who is among you that fears the Lord that obeys the voice of his servant? Who are those God-fearers out there who are obeying the servant of Yahweh, who's obeying the servant of the Lord, who's obeying Jesus Christ himself? Well, that's you and I, and he tells us here, Isaiah does, in Isaiah 50 and verse 10, well, who is those out there, the, the ones that are obeying the voice of the Lord? Well, you walk in darkness and have no light, but let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. In other words, those who are obeying the voice of the servant are obeying him as his disciple. And because we are his disciples, and the servant of the Lord was the disciple of God, then we are obeying God himself. We pay heed, we listen, we obey, we pay heed to the Lord's servant as a disciple because the Lord's servant paid heed as a disciple to the Lord, that is, God the Father. And so therefore, we can make this application that the servant, the servant, Christ, is the disciple. He's the model disciple for all his disciples. He is the illustration that I am to follow. And the, the following, the model that I'm interested in this, this, this evening is the model of his discipleship. And of course, we see that here in verses four and five. So let's just real quickly note the word again. <clears throat> the Lord God hath given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the weary one with the word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as what? As a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. Now, I just want to bring out several things for our consideration and for our prayer time here uh, this evening. First of all, note in verse 4 that the servant of the Lord was given the tongue of a disciple. That is, <clears throat> discipleship illustrates itself in some fashion or form, and I hope to show you what that fashion or form is later, but it illustrates itself with our speech. There is a certain type of speech that is characteristic of a disciple, one who is following the teaching of another. A disciple. So first of all, the disciple as the servant of the Lord was given the tongue of a disciple. Secondly, he says in verse 4, at the end of that verse, he awakens my ear to what? Not a tongue, but he awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. So not only does he give the servant the tongue of a disciple, he gives the servant an ear, a listening capacity, a hearing capacity to hear what, in this case we know, God the Father is teaching him as a disciple. So you've got the tongue, our speech, you've got our ears, that is our hearing, and then, in verse, then thirdly, he shows us in verse 5 
that the Lord God has opened my ear. Now, you can desire to be a disciple, and you can desire to be taught as a disciple, and you can even determine by an act of your will that you're going to obey as a disciple, but unless the Lord God opens your ear to hear, it will all be in vain. The Lord, through his Spirit, has to illumine us to what the text, the voice of the Lord, is teaching us. So when we come to the servant, our Lord Jesus Christ, he was given the tongue of a disciple. He was given ears as a disciple, a listening ear. Thirdly, the Lord opened his ears. He was not deaf to what the text was saying, to what God was instructing him about. And then, not only did was he taught as a disciple, he followed as a disciple. Look at verse 5. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. I gave my back to those who strike me, <clears throat> and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. So what we learn here is this. Not only was he determined to be taught, <clears throat> not only was he determined to speak as a disciple, but he was determined to follow what he learned even if <clears throat> there was a cost associated to his obedience, a cost of being confronted with shame the cost of being confronted with suffering. Or even, brethren, the cost of being confronted with death. This is the servant as the disciple. And that servant who is the disciple trusted the teacher and what the teacher had taught him and he walked in what he was taught. Note here in verse 10. Who among you that fears the Lord, that obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in darkness and has no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. So what we want to do is, and we're, we are the disciples of Jesus, Jesus is the disciple of God the Father. And because of that, we are disciples of God the Father. How are we to be as that disciple? We are to be as he is. We are a servant of the servant. We are a disciple of the disciple. And that his discipleship then becomes a model. Now, when you take this, then what I ask myself is this, where would I see this in my New Testament? And where I landed on this was really a most unusual passage, but a very familiar passage. And I want us to take our Bibles and turn to the book of Luke. <clears throat> the book of Luke, chapter 2. And what we see here is kind of an out-of-the-blue um, event in the life of our Lord. It was not an event in his babyhood, that is, in that early childhood days, to show forth the fulfillment of Old Testament Scripture. It was not even in his adulthood when he was around 30 when he began his public ministry and he was baptized by John the Baptist and he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Even though that in itself has roots into the Old Testament. But what we have is an event in between those two events. A very strange event. It's the only event recorded really before Jesus was age 30, and that is when he was 12 years old. He was a 12-year-old boy, and we have this 
event that is written down only by Luke. It seems to be out of the blue, and yet I think that it does illustrate passages and prophecies from the Old Testament and perhaps even shows us here the young Jesus' discipleship. So let's take a look at this. Luke chapter 2. I want, to, I want you to note verse 40. The child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in what? Wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Everybody see that? So, so he's growing physically. He's gaining strength physically. He's growing up. And he is increasing in wisdom. And he is increasing in the grace of God, in the favor of God. Then right after that, we have this event of his parents visiting Jerusalem, leaving Jesus behind accidentally, and then finding him back in the temple, conversing with him. And then if we go to the end of Luke chapter 2, and look at verse 52. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Highly unusual statement. And it's unusual, and we expect children to be growing up. We expect children to be increasing in height. We expect children to be growing strong. But it is this thing of wisdom and favor in the sight of God that I'm interested in. So in verse 40, he's increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. You have this event. And then verse 52, Jesus continued increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And then you have this event in between. And what is in between those two statements of implication that he was a disciple, you have this event of Jesus being in the temple. And so let's take a look at that. He's 12 years old. He goes up for the feast. His parents, uh, stay, his parents left. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, verse 43. They supposed that he was with them. They were about a day's journey. That's a long ways by foot. They began looking for him. They couldn't find him. They turned around and went a day's back journey, verse 45, to Jerusalem. And it took them three days in that massive city, verse 46, and they found him where? In the temple. Now note this, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. That looks like to me it looks like to me like a disciple. He's sitting in the midst of the teachers. He's listening to their instruction. He is asking questions about the text and the instruction. He is speaking to them rightly, verse 47, and they were amazed at his understanding and his answers because they were asking him questions. It was a back and forth type of instruction. That looks like to me like discipleship, doesn't it? And that's what we're talking about. The servant as the disciple. Isaiah says he's going to have the tongue of a disciple. He's going to listen like a disciple. The Lord's going to open his ear. Every day, morning by morning, he's going to follow what the teacher is teaching him, even if it caused him shame, suffering, and death. And he is going to trust the teacher and the teacher's instruction and walk therein. That's what Isaiah prophesied. 
So what do we see here? Well, look at verse 46. <clears throat> the last three words in that verse. Jesus, as the disciple, was asking them questions. Folks, how do you ask someone a question? You ask someone a question with your speech, with your tongue. That is a characteristic of a disciple. He is asking questions. In our case, we're asking questions from the text. We are praying and asking questions of our teacher, the Lord. He's asking them questions. Secondly, verse 46 again. <clears throat> He is listening to them. Verse 46, sitting in the midst of the temple. Yes, he's asking them questions, but he is listening to them. A 12-year-old disciple is asking those teachers questions. So he's got the tongue of a disciple. He's asking them questions. He's got the ear of a disciple. He's listening as a disciple. He's listening to them. And the Lord opened his ear. You say, well, where do you see that? Well, look at verse 47. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And folks, verse 47 is sandwiched between verse 40, increasing in wisdom and the grace of God was upon him, and verse 52, increasing in wisdom and in favor with God and men. That verse, verse 47, is letting us know that there is a master teacher, the Lord himself, who is teaching our Lord. And our Lord is responding to this like a disciple. And those teachers, verse 47, were amazed at this 12-year-old boy's understanding and his answers. It's amazing. What are we supposed to see here? We can see a lot of things here, but I think we're supposed to be seeing Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 and 5. The servant as the disciple a model disciple that we as New Testament disciples are to follow him in. Fourthly, his parents did find him. <clears throat> and in verse 49, excuse me, verses 48 and 49, his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's? Now, note the word house is italicized. But I have to be in my father's house. In other words, he is listening as a disciple, speaking as a disciple, giving understanding to the text, to those men, but he is also following even in light of this perhaps mild rebuke. In other words, this would have been a shame to him if it was true, but it wasn't true. Jesus was not trying to cause his parents any consternation at all. But he had to be in the father's house. And the word house, as I mentioned, is italicized. It really means I have to be about my father's affairs. I have to be about my father's business, as one translation says. And Jesus continued following God the Father says in verse 51, he went down with them and came to Nazareth and he continued in subjection to them and his mother treasured all these things in her heart and Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and in favor with God and men. He followed 
what God the Father had taught him. He spoke what God the Father had taught him. He gave the understanding because the Lord opened up his ear and communicated it to other men. And he continued to do that even when he was confronted with undeserved rebuke. And that pattern of presenting himself as a disciple to God the Father continued all the days of his life. He kept increasing in wisdom. He kept increasing in the favor of God. And folks, Isaiah says that he did this daily. He did this in the morning, morning by morning. He opened his ear to hear. Now, brethren, this evening in our prayer time, I think it would be a good idea for all of us to settle in our hearts to take the model disciple to be our model. That the model disciple who was the servant of the Lord, taught by God the Father, that model disciple is now the one who is discipling us by the Holy Spirit through the pages of the Bible. He expects us to speak like we're disciples. He expects us to listen as we if we are a disciple, because we are. He desires to open up the ears of our understanding so that we can understand what the text is saying. And he expects us to follow him regardless of the obstacles, even an obstacle of shame or an off, uh, obstacle of inner suffering or an obstacle of outer suffering or an obstacle of even death. And he expects us to do that, brethren, every day. So I want to ask a couple of questions. How's our Bible reading coming this year? I'm not, I'm not even talking about studying. I'm just talking about reading our Bibles every day. Our children ought to see us doing that, parents. Our Christ, our living Lord, should see us doing that every day. And all of us, every genuine believer, can improve their discipleship by looking at the model. God the Son became God the man. He's the perfect human. He's the perfect servant. He's the perfect disciple. And brethren, if he needed to have this Bible opened up to him every day, as a man, if he had to be illumined by God the Father every morning, how much more do we need? How much more, parents, should our children be taught this discipleship? And you know, parents, I think even the best of us, even the best of us has a contentment at our level of discipleship, whatever that is. We're just kind of satisfied. It's comfortable. But brethren, he kept increasing in wisdom. We must increase in wisdom. He kept increasing in the favor of God. We must be increasing in the favor and grace of God. How do we do that? By using our tongues, listening with our ears, obeying with our feet, the Lord illuminating us, and our not turning back to what we have been taught by the Bible, by preaching, by 
by and in good churches, not turning back from that. And brethren, let us not just challenge ourselves for that. Let's pray for that. <clears throat> Let's pray that the Lord would give us, our family, our children, our grandchildren, our church, the tongue, the speech of a disciple. Let's pray that the Lord would give us ears like a disciple. We all can improve our listening, how easily distracted we are. Let us pray that the Lord would open up our ears so that we would hear. And let's do this every day so that God the Father taught God the Son as a disciple. And now God the Son as the disciple teaches his disciples after the same manner. Let's pray for these things for the glory of God.